Hello and welcome to Lately Fashionable. I am Chelsea Souter and if you are not already familiar with my channel, I am currently working through a year-long challenge of making myself a vintage inspired wardrobe so that I could spend all of next year dressing vintage every day. For this video, I will be talking about the first project that I finished for this challenge. And I love it so much! I do want to apologize for my voice. I am getting over a cold, and it's why this video is going to be a week later than I had originally planned. But I just couldn't wait. I, I love this skirt, and I want to tell you about it. I finished it a week ago, and I have already worn it four times. So basically every other day. And the only reason I'm not wearing it right now is because I want to be able to hold it up and show it to you. This skirt is my favorite thing that I've made so far this year. It's also the only thing that I've made so far this year. And it is my favorite project for this challenge so far. Also the only project I've made for this challenge so far. But I anticipate it being my favorite project for a while, possibly for the whole year. I will keep you updated if anything else knocks this out of its number one spot, but right now it's in number one. However, before I can talk about this skirt, I need to talk about its predecessor, which is this brown skirt, which I mentioned briefly in my Rating My Vintage Makes video at the beginning of the year, but this navy blue skirt was made to replace this brown skirt? Not really to replace. It was made as a direct copy, but also an improvement on the brown skirt. And I did achieve that in a number of ways. First of all, I picked a better fabric this time around. This was a fairly cheap polyester gabardine fabric, so like a suiting weight polyester twill weave. And it's pretty nice for the price I paid for it, which I don't remember, it was years ago. But it has pilling issues. It's the same fabric as the teal skirt, which I'm wearing, which also has pilling issues. And the flat felled seams on the skirt are a little bit just wrinkled from sewing them on the machine. But for an everyday skirt, it has held up fairly well. I do wear it quite often and I really love it. I love the length. It's about mid-calf and it's very comfortable to wear. It has an adjustable waist, which I will get into, and it is also a hybrid or mashup or Franken pattern, if you will, of two different patterns that I've made skirts from in the past that I loved, and I wanted to combine them into one. But I did so in a way that also combined the pocket openings of an 18th century petticoat, of which I have also made several, but inserts modern pockets into that seam so that I don't have to tie on a pocket, I just have pockets available, but they are also part of the closure system. I did buttons on this one partly because I was originally inspired to make this skirt by this skirt that I thrifted, oh, I want to say three years ago now, I'm not entirely sure, and it has a pocket opening only on one side, but this kind of gave me the idea that this was possible, that I could make this style of skirt with a pocket opening and then I wouldn't have to sew a zipper because as previously stated, I'm allergic to sewing zippers and I avoid it whenever possible. But the skirt does close with buttons. It has two buttons at the waistband and the closure overlaps so it closes at both sides of the pocket. It does have a pocket on the other side but that pocket does not have an opening. The skirt actually has a lot of capsule wardrobe potential. It has a lot of colors in it that I can pull tops from my wardrobe and match with it, and that was part of the draw of buying it in the first place. So like I said, I bought the skirt, I think three years ago, and I had been toying around with the idea of making one like it with that pocket opening at the sides ever since, and when I decided to make this skirt, 
which I kind of made as a replacement for my historical Edwardian walking skirt, also in brown, which I made from the Scroop Patterns fantail skirt. Great pattern, by the way. But I wanted something that was a little bit more practical in my daily life than a floral length skirt, which that one is. So that's where I came up with the idea to mash together the 1940s A-line skirt pattern, which is this one. So I used the front center and front side panels of that skirt, and then just the back panel of the fantail walking skirt. And rather than have it close with a back placket, like the walking skirt, or side zipper, like the pattern instructions for the A-line skirt, I did a double side pocket opening, and then buttonholes with two buttons at each closure so that I can adjust it a good two inches just by changing which button I use. And I went with the buttons for the closure because that way it could be decorative as well. So I have an extra button hanging out there and it looks purposeful, it looks intentional, like it's just a design element, but it can also be used if I need to. If it had been a snap and there was just the other half of the snap sitting there without the waistband covering it, it would look dumb. Same with, you know, hooks and bars, skirt hooks, or anything like that. So that's why I went with buttons. I like them as a decorative element, and I have a lot of buttons in my stash, which I'm trying to work through and use up. Yeah, overall, it was a very successful pattern mashup, and I really enjoy wearing it. I've worn it a lot. I wish it was made of better fabric, but you know, sometimes we have to perfect the pattern on inferior fabric before we can move on to something better. Which this totally is. This is definitely better fabric in more ways than one. This fabric was originally a wool 18th century petticoat costume from Colonial Williamsburg, which I purchased at their costume sale last spring, along with several others. I have a whole video about it, my costume haul, so you can watch that if you wish. And this is not the first thing I've made from that pile of petticoats, but it is the first thing I'm making a video about. So this wool was already a step up from the polyester skirt because it's a natural fiber. I tend to like using natural fibers better just for my own comfort level. I like the feel of them. I don't like wearing plastic, <laughs> um, if I can help it. And I also like knowing that it's better for the environment. That helps the fabric breathe. It's usually easier to work with, and I tend to have better results when I use natural fibers. So that's my personal preference. Your mileage may vary, but this is also just a higher quality fabric than the polyester was. Not to say that you can't get higher quality polyester, and you can also get lower quality wool and other natural fibers, but this fabric, as well as being a natural fiber, is a higher quality. And that definitely shows in the seam treatment, because I did the same flat felt seams on all of these, and they just turned out so much nicer without me doing anything different. And this fabric should last longer. It shouldn't pill and fuzz up in the same way that this has, and it should hold up better to repeated wear, which it's certainly going to get. I also did make this one more full because I should have cut not just the front center and side panels of the A-line skirt, but I should have also cut the side back panels of that pattern, and I didn't. I don't remember if I didn't have enough fabric or if I just forgot, but that made it so that the pleats at the center back are not as deep and full as they should be. I kind of fudged them to make them look the same at the waist, but it's just not as full a skirt as it could have been. But with this one, I did have enough fabric and I was able to cut the five front and side panels from the A-line skirt and you can probably see the difference. This between my two fingers is the full two back panels of the skirt and they're just much more densely pleated up, which is how it's supposed to be, versus the back panel being stretched across the entire 
back of the waistband. So it's a fuller, more swooshy skirt. It's a little more comfortable to wear in the winter because it feels like I'm being wrapped in a blanket. And also the wool fabric does insulate better. It both looks and feels nicer to wear and makes me very happy. One thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about my improvements in the navy skirt is that on the brown one, I did not bother making the internal waistband close underneath in the front at all. So these pocket flaps are just hanging on the inside. And I do intend to put probably snaps here to close it. And I'm okay with having extra snap halves on the inside of the waistband because they're not going to show. But on this one, I did add a twill tape waistband that fastens with a skirt hook. And I will go and add more of the bar side of the hooks to either side, probably, of the waistband as I add more buttons. I put two buttons on for now based on what my waist measurement currently is, but as it does fluctuate on occasion, I plan to add two more buttons on either side just because I have six, so that's how many I'm going to use. And then I will add more bars to the skirt hook accordingly. And lastly, I decided to add a decoration to the hem, which you have probably noticed. I had a lot of this velvet ribbon, I think something like 15 yards. I didn't use quite all of it. I think I used 12, maybe? I need to actually measure, and um, I think I wrote down somewhere how much I had to begin with, and I should measure how much I have left, because I didn't do that before I started filming, but that would have been information that would be nice to have right now, to just share with you. I'll put it up here. <laughs> anyway, and would you believe this velvet ribbon applique took much longer than putting the entire skirt together from start to finish. And unfortunately for me, I could not just make the whole skirt and then add the applique because it is so full, I wanted to lay out the applique with the skirt still flat. So I did not close up the center back seam until I had hand sewn most of the applique on. So that took me most of the month of January, even though the skirt could have been finished in the first week but I do think it was worth it. I really love how it looks. It makes me very happy. It does not show up on camera as well as I hoped it would. If I hold it closer to the light, you can see. There we go. Yeah, I've got a ring light on the floor. My original vision was kind of an Edwardian applique design, but because of the way Velvet Ribbon really wants to stay straight, it does not do curves. Um, it kind of ended up more of an 1860s motif, which is fine. Um, it wasn't the vibe I was going for, but I am happy with how it turned out. And then I just hemmed it with some hem binding. I have a lot in my stash, and I like to use it because it's a vintage notion, and I really like the look it gives to a finished garment. It's just much easier to do a curved hem with a seam binding or facing of some sort than it is to actually turn the fabric up twice and stitch it. I did the same on this skirt, the one I'm wearing. Um, I did a different treatment on the brown skirt. I decided to face it with bias tape, and then I kind of liked the look of this contrast with the, the lighter color bias tape. So instead of flipping that under and tacking it on the inside, I just flipped it over the hem edge and tacked it so that it was visible. I thought about making a video about this skirt at the time I was working on it, even though I did not film any of the process at all. <laughs> so I was planning to make a video, but then several other creators on YouTube were also making a split side style skirt at the same time, and I didn't think mine added anything new to the mix, so I didn't, but it was kind of a cool, like, hive mind sort of moment. And I will link everyone 
who I know of that has made this style of skirt in my description, so you'll be able to find their videos if you are interested. I think adjustable clothing has been having a moment lately, and I am so here for it. <laughs> Anyway, that is my new favorite skirt. It is 1940s in the front, 1900s in the back, 1860s <laughs> applique, 1700s side openings with 2020s pocket closure. So <laughs> it really is a time hopping, history bounding, vintage modern skirt. And I love it. I love it so much. If you loved it too, Feel free to give this video a like, and if you want to see more as I continue to sew my vintage makes for the coming year, definitely subscribe, and I will see you soon with another video and hopefully my voice back. <laughs> Bye.